the landing now? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know, and then you had Concord as well, if you remember Concord. Well, I, I, one of my regrets is they took Concord off and I didn't get a flight in it because I think, was it not something like four hours to New York? It was very quick, yes, it was very quick. Scotty. Four or five uh, hours to New York, I mean, tremendous. And, of course, uh, lovely to see a Concord lands with uh, with with the colonel in uh, the wild geese. Ah, uh, right, okay. Yes, right. it's uh, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, it comes yeah, over uh, by Concord, and you saw the shield. Uh, one of the features of Concord, if I remember right, was she had the 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 window shields that came up when she landed, so she must have had special glass shields. Okay. And then you could also drop her nose um, to see where you were going. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure you could drop the nose cone. The pilot could drop the nose cone because with the nose yeah. cone there, you couldn't see a thing when you'd landed. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I think they got rid of the plane because it, it turned out it wasn't safe. Well, no, there was a disaster. I think it was maybe a tire blowout. I don't know if that was caused by debris. And I think it was in Paris. I think it might right. be Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. But um, I think they probably got rid of Concorde. The decision was made that uh, it was just so expensive. Yeah, yeah. Because, you see, I'll tell you a lovely bit about aviation history, Karim. I know you're into all sorts. And they, they, they're always talking about doing another runway, the next runway for Heathrow. And people are up in arms because the south is very, very heavily polluted aircraft-wise. Now, probably changed a bit since, uh, since the pandemic. But in 1952, a wonderful, wonderful company called Saunders Row on the Isle of Wight, which became um, British hovercraft, and eventually Westland Helicopters, and there was a stishy with the Thatcher government and uh, all that stuff about Westland Helicopters. And um, I, I, I think it ended, ended up losing this wonderful company. Now, um, Saunders Row built a huge flying boat called the Princess, and the government didn't take up the scheme, and they ended up scrapping them. Two beautiful big hulks, and they were massive airliners, but flying boats. Now, you think about it. This country is then surrounded by runways. So you can touch down anywhere. So if you've got Presley Airport, you could touch down at the shore. A launch comes out and takes the passengers. But, but the, the whole idea of the flying boat and the luxury had gone by then. But flying boats were very, very popular for getting around because you could especially at the height of empire, because you could touch down in any of the ports. Uh, well, right, you could touch okay. down in Aden or Malta or, or just, just wherever you like, India, Africa, right. you know, right. Right. and uh, the right. seaplane. So I would say have a look up Saunders Row Princess, and I think right. you'll be amazed. Right, okay. Well, are they quite expensive? To, you know, to make, to develop, to well, well to any aircraft is expensive to build. You're talking into millions now. I mean, a uh, fighter jet is many, many millions for just yeah. a tiny little fighter jet. And a lot of that will be technology. And they've just retired the Hawker Harrier, uh, the right. jump jet. And uh, Thomas Sopwith of the Sopwith Camel, who was right. uh, the father of aviation in this country, really. Uh, the Sopwith right. Camel, the Sopwith Pop, fighters in the First World War. And he was one of the first with an aero license. Right. And Thomas right. lived till he was about, I think, 102 or 105 or something. I can't remember. T-O-M, Thomas Optive right. Murdoch Sopwith. And uh, the Sopwith uh, Aircraft Companies. And eventually he was the chairman of Hawkers. So he went from holding one of the first aero licenses in this country, uh -huh. dated, I think, 1912, to seeing the development of the jump jet. Right, okay. And his autobiography, no, it's not his autobiography, it's a biography, it's called Pure Luck, because they interviewed Thomas Saltwith Tommy and said to him, 
What do you put your tremendous success down to? And he said, pure luck. Oh, okay. That was his saying, pure luck. And he was, oh, he was a very, very, very wealthy man, but a very, very nice man, Tommy Sopwith. And uh -huh. um, he uh, and it had huge yachts and huge racing yachts at the time of Lipton and George V and all that kind of stuff with Britannia. So they were big uh -huh. racing yacht people. Uh, stacks and stacks and stacks of money and um, at the start of the First World War his Rolls Royce was getting filled up by the chauffeur at the pumps and uh, somebody came out and, and said um, you know, it, it, you can't do this now, there's petrol rationing and he reported this to Tommy and Tommy said, oh my goodness, I hadn't realised and put the Rolls Royce up in blocks for the whole war Right. Okay. You know, uh, he was he was he was just the most amazing guy. And what he did was he went to a Dornier in Germany in the nineteen thirties. He saw that Germany was rearming and he came uh -huh. back and he said to his own company, Hawker, he said, um, build me some uh, build some hurricanes. And they said, Who are they for, Sir Thomas? He said, For me. So they built uh -huh. these hurricanes and sure enough, along came the disorganized British government. He said, we need fighters, we need fighters. Can you get them? He said, yes, I can. And he sold oh. them He sold them the uh, the Hurricanes. Right, yeah. <laughs> nice entrepreneurship, isn't it? That, that, so that was really good. That was clever. You know, yeah. so, so, I mean, you know, it's not for the faint-hearted, but just an amazing story. And aircraft only get better because of the bigger engines. They get faster. Yeah, yeah. More powerful. More yeah. powerful, I'll, yeah. I'll, so I hope I'll, that you overcome your fear of flying, Karim. Thank you. I'll, I'll be okay once I go on the plane. I will be nervous and highly strong for the, the four and a half hours. But uh -huh. you know what? I'll, I'll get me the tablet. I'll try and watch something. Well, and... Karim, see when you go on, think to yourself, right, dinky do, Scotty McClure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch and, some of your shows, Scotty. That's yes, an idea. Yes, and, and it will calm you right down. Fantastic. Absolutely. Lovely and to hear you. Well, listen, I'll say good day to you, and if you're on tonight, I'll speak then, OK? That would be fabulous, Kareem. Take great care of yourself, and uh, thanks, thanks again, and dinky do. Thank you too. Bye, Scotty. Oh, what a top man. That's our Kareem, a fine fellow. Last night it was on, and there was some interesting stuff. Now, what have we got here? Scotty, I've been following the story regarding the Jacobite rebellion. Simon, it wasn't a rebellion, it was a rising. Uh, we tend to look on the rebellion as being a Scottish operation to restore a Catholic to the throne of England. This huge Lancastrian uprising.